Welcome back to another episode of The Gateway. Today, we join our players a little bit on the heavy side, a couple extras joining us. Um, we have Sir Iru and Hexgrim here joining us today. We'll get to them uh, here in a little bit. We join our party back at the Stonehill Inn um, after spending a couple of hours running about town. You guys gathered some information uh, on some of the going, goings-ons in the town. Um, you heard from an old adventurer about um, and a well nearby that was causing trouble for some of the local um, inhabitants of uh, Vandalen. Um, sounds like there was some undead reeling by, um, causing just some trouble. There was also somebody digging around this old well. Um, it was the site for um, an ancient city, and there's lots of ruins, so there's lots of things they could be digging for. He was curious if you all would go check it out for him. Um, upon returning to the Stonehill Inn, you also heard from your Goliath companion about um, the Shrine of Luck in town and the sister Gla Galail, who was at the shrine praying. Um, she has a quest for all of you about a wraith um, that she needs appraised so that she can answer a question about a spell book for Galail. Um, Salidar also told you all about some of his um, uh, his jobs and what he needs done uh, around this town. One of the main ones being um, finding his um, companion Rockseeker, uh, as Rockseeker possesses a map to a mine that he believes will fund this town to bring it up to a um, more inter-town trading position. Um, his second mission is ridding this town of the Red Brands because of the um, uh, threat um, that they pose to any incoming travelers and any developments in the town. Um, you all sit in uh, the tavern. Being midday, there aren't quite as many um, patrons in here as you guys are used to, uh, from last night anyway. Um, you guys are sitting around just talking. Um, you guys do know you guys do notice that there is a large half orc sitting at the bar. Seems that there is nobody actually servicing him at the moment. He's been sitting here for a couple of minutes. A little curious looking around. If there's anything you'd like to be doing, Iru? Or any of the rest of you? Um, well, I, I don't like that I'm not being served a drink, so I'd like to get the bartender's attention and get a drink. That's you, what I'm doing. You don't see anyone. You don't see anyone behind the bar. Um, what? Dadgummit. All right, well, then I'll start reaching blindly over the counter for something. <laughs> okay, yeah, your, uh, your grasp is long enough that you're able to just grab yourself a bar or a, a glass and kind of stick it under the tap and fill one up. Outstanding. Okay. Um, Hexgrim, you are about to enter the, the Stonehill Inn. You've been uh, out of town for a couple days gathering some supplies. You just come back in to, um, into town to uh, wet your whistle and kind of uh, resupply your stomach for the day. Uh, as you were walking by, you were, here you are kind of down in the bottom corner here, you do um, hear a scream coming from somewhere in this general area. The front door is over on this side, you know. But as you're walking up, you do hear a scream come somewhere from the back. Um, yeah, I'd like to investigate that scream. Um, so from where it is, I would like to make my way slowly around the building. Okay, cool. Yeah, so like basically over, over by where the door's at, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, you, you do make your way over and you do... You see a door in front of you. Um, it is like the back entrance door, kind of like the loading bay where they would bring the, the barrels in for um, resupply and stuff. And you can hear that there's this, um, actually do an investigation check for me. 15 on die, let's see. Ooh, what is investigation? 
Uh, so that'll be plus six. 21? Damn. Yeah, you can hear uh, a little bit of a, a struggle going on inside. It sounds like there's a, somebody who possibly needs, needs some help or is um, otherwise in current distress. Are there windows? And if so, how high up off the ground are they? So you do not see any windows. Um, the, the knob to the door, though, is like just above head height. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I will go ahead and approach the door, and I'll let out a very low whistle. Um, and as I do so, I would like to summon my steel defender, who is just my faithful companion. Um, his name is Omicron, but he goes by Ami for sure, short. Um, so I'll call him and essentially this heap of gears and metal kind of crashes to the ground around me and forms this makeshift dog that looks really, really crude at first. Um, and then it Almost shakes... Yeah, shakes like a dog would and kind of sets into place, and it kind of resembles a border collie. Uh, I have uh, a very interesting token for this. <laughs> here, here you go. And I won't let, I'll make it so you can control that as well. And I'm not seeing that on. Yeah, where it at? Roll 20. Yeah. Oh, it should be right next to you. Put it right next to outside. You know, we're not in looking at the tavern page, right? You didn't move us over. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, I didn't. That's, <laughs> That's why I was confused with the door. My we're in, bad. like, the outdoor area. Of the yeah. Tavern. You guys, yeah, that's right. You guys are in that, <laughs> that hallway. There we go. Oh, so, you know, this makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, ah, I see. Okay. Those are very big tables. They are like 20 feet long okay awesome all right so as i assemble ami to me um i'm going to carefully check the door the door handle to see if it is unlocked okay uh yeah you you do give it a test and it is locked it's locked it's the the door is actually not locked it seems like uh it's being held shut or it's been barred chair under the door so it's like you try to turn it and it, there's a little bit of resistance and you turn it all the way try and push on it and it doesn't really move when you do move the door though um albeit carefully uh it does seem like a little bit of the scuffling kind of stops for a second and what, whatever's going inside kind of pauses. Um, okay but the door itself doesn't open at all no no it is it is uh barred Well, shoot. For the uh, rest of you waiting in this tavern, um, you guys have been going over the plans for kind of your um, your action plan for the rest of the day, um, mild-manneredly man having conversation. Um, oh, crap. Thing. Um, when mm -hmm. in busts in a gang of red brand. One after another, after another, after another, until eight of them have filled in this tavern. And they look over, they look around the tavern, not seeing anybody, and they look in your direction. You guys, the group. Oi, those are the ones. Those are the ones that threw Chuck. I know it. That's the description. The dragonborn, the, the, the elves, I know it. And they all begin to move towards you guys to surround. Looks like they are coming in to attack. Okay. I would try and lie about it, but I don't think they care. I don't think they <laughs> I think these ugly guys are talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> Dragonborn? Are they talking about me? Elves? <laughs> they said they threw Chuck. Specifically, I think that'd be Thea. Yeah, you're the one who threw him. Oh, mm. oh no! <laughs> <laughs> she, oh. she did it. <laughs> I point to oh, the badger. <laughs> so you all admit it then. You didn't pay the fee to get into town and y'all gonna pay now. Like hell we are. 
Agreed. <laughs> Let's go ahead and roll an initiative. Um, Iru, go ahead and uh, roll initiative two just to kind of get you in the order. Um, and then Hexgrim, as uh, this is happening, you can hear that uh, the um, there are voices inside that seem to be muffled. Like there are some final screams before like a <laughs> Sam Hill's going on. Um, I got a okay. 10 for initiative. I got a 19. Ugh, 16. 18. Starting off strong with a 1. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat. At least it's on initiative. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you're still just... drinking at the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just leaning there like. <laughs> Bella, you said you got 16? Yeah. Uh... Um, okay. I got 10 for Thea, 19 Nikon, 18 Parthenex, 1 Iru, and 16 Sela. Okay. Um, and then, uh, actually, go, Hexgrim, go give me an initiative, too, just so we can kind of keep you in turn. I know you're not in battle right now, but I don't want to forget you. Got an 18. You can chuck that okay. glass from, like, across the room. Right. You are uh, tied with Parthenax. Um, which one of you guys want to go first? Uh, Parthenax, what's your dexterity modifier? Oh, yeah, that'd be an easy way to do it. Plus two. Cool. You beat me, so you can go first. Okay. Nice. All right, Nikon, you are going to be up first. You notice as these red brands are moving in that something bad is going to go down, and they are looking for a fight. How many guys do we see? Yeah, there are some to to tokens for these. Fine. There are eight of them. Bugs. Oh yeah, it would eight. be helpful if I put them on the uh, the part that you can actually see. Token layer. Oh, oh geez. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well. All right. What what would you like to do, Nikon? Remember, you can also hold your action if you would like to kind of wait a minute to do something. None of these guys have attacked yet. But yeah. you can tell it is very obvious that uh, they're about to do something pretty quick here. I like to, let's see, do my lightning bolt, rich finger. I forget how oh. much it hits. Hold on. My rich bolt. Which bolt? Oh, that makes sense. Is that when a, a roll to hit? Yeah. OK. All right, I'm going to roll d d20. I got an 18. Does it hit? Uh, yeah. Which okay. one are you trying to hit? <laughs> I'm going to try to hit the closest one to my left on the carpet area. OK, this guy. That rug, yeah. Okay. Right, rolling a d12. I got a three. Ooh. Yeah. Is that plus anything? Uh, where is it? It said uh, on the hit. It says plus three. Does that is that it? Uh, that so that's else? that's that's just for your hit modifier. Okay. So yeah, it is just the d12 damage. Yeah, just that. Okay. Yeah. So there's three damage to this guy. Layer stuff. Every now and then, when roll 20 gets in the way, this guy. All right. Two hit him. You got three damage, right? Yes. Awesome. Okay. All right. So, having seen that hit, um, guy, where's number one? Uh, 
Well, one of them is going to attack. Okay. If I can find the number one guy. They don't have names, they have numbers. <laughs> can any of you guys hear the music? Is that too loud or? I can hear it, it's okay. Very faint, okay. Okay, cool, yeah. I don't want it to be too loud. <laughs> Where's number one? He was number one. Okay, so this guy, close. Uh, sees you guys make an attack and is just going to be ready up on Parthenax. He's going to make an attack on you um, with a simple short sword that he's got. Ooh. Uh, I don't imagine that a 10 hits. No. No, probably wouldn't. Okay. Um, I, mean, I just want to make sure that they don't have like a hack tactic thing so that if they're in a group... I'll check on this one. Two. Okay, no, but he does have multi attack. He could make another attack with his short sword. Uh, does a 15 hit? No. Okay. Yep, so he makes his attack, and then Parthenax, you are up. Okay. Uh. Let me measure something. Okay. Please do what I think you're going to do. It'll be so <laughs> awesome. Might cause some uh, damage, but you know. Uh, first, I'm going to look at Sela and say, can our fluffy friend join? And then I'm going to turn around and unleash burning hands in a 15-foot cone. In front of me. Ooh. Oh, dear. So, so you want to get, so you'll get four of them. Yeah. Three and a half. Yeah, and I'm aiming it towards the fireplace, which is the most fire resistant <laughs> uh, part of this inn. So thoughtful. The, the fireplace is behind you. No, so this, you know. That's, is that's this not entrance. a heart? No, that, that's the, oh, no, 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 you're right. That is, that wouldn't be the entrance, yeah. Yeah, my bad. Door's over here. Yeah. Fireplace right here. You're right. Uh, anyway, they've got to make a... Dex save, oh. A Dex 14 save. I'll just get like... Oh, oh man. There's four of them. Yeah. Okay. So you have to beat 14. Two yep. fails to succeed. So we'll say that the two in the back succeed and the two in the front fail. That, that logically does make a little bit more sense. Okay. Um, I'm going to re roll the one I rolled using a sorcery point because that's pitifully low. For it. Okay. So the ones that failed take seven damage, the other ones would take three. Okay. And then Hexgrim, you are gonna be on deck. Uh is there anything else you'd like to do, Parthenax? Uh yeah. I'm going to Misty step over here. Nice. Just sort of Very bamf cool. behind Aru. What is your, is there a component or a, a word for your Misty step? Uh, it's a verbal component. What is your, what is your verbal component for the skill or for the spell? Do you go bamf? No, I'll probably just go roll and then I'm there. Nice. So all, yeah, all of you guys are standing around your dragonborn companion and then he just uh, lets out this deep dragonborn or, or draconic um, guttural growl almost and then just a puff of smoke appears and he appears at the other end of the wall. Um, Hexgrim, you are up. All right, so Sally, the, muffling, the muffling inside, do I get the sense that it's 
a struggle that something bad is happening in there? It's is it uh, super suspicious to me. Yeah, you um, go ahead and give me um, just a straight intelligence check real quick. Don't imagine that you'd go low, but. 16 on die plus six. Ooh, yeah, you are able to put together that th this is probably like the back room where the owners of the, the bar are at and somebody's probably trying to rough them up or um, okay. throw them over. I let out a small gnomish giggle to myself and start rubbing my hands. <laughs> um, and as I do so, a tiny little hammer and a tiny little ratchet kind of just pop into my hands from my sleeves and I start banging on rocks um, and I look over and I grab a tree branch and I start shaking that as well. So what I would like to do, um, because I'm not technically in uh, initiative yet, I would like to use two of my magical tinkering actions. So with the branch, as I'm uh, rubbing it, it begins sounding louder and louder and crackling and begins to sound like a, a raging fire outside as if one of the trees had caught fire. Um, and I would like to put it next to the door with the rock that I grabbed as I'm banging on it. Um, I'm thinking very heavily of the time that my battalion was held down by gunfire and all I can think about is all the smoke and just how it filled my lungs. And, and as I'm thinking about it, the, ro the, the rock begins to emit the very strong scent of smoke. And I'd like to put that by the door as well. Okay. So as my things are in place, um, I would like to take a step back and ready an action with my crossbow. Um, not to fire, but to aim at anyone to open the door. And I'd like to yell in my very deep, monotone, gnomish voice, fire, fire, and see if anyone <laughs> opens the door. <laughs> I love that was it. fucking awesome. <laughs> fire! <laughs> okay, yeah, after uh, a couple moments of um, kind of preparing this and, and waiting, uh, it does seem like the door does begin to move kind of frantically. You can hear on the other side, boy, go check that out. See what's going on. And uh, yeah, sure enough, um, very large red clad man opens the door. Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay. Um, perfect. So I believe I am new to uh, Artificer. I believe my Steel Defender shares my initiative role. So he goes directly after me. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. Cool. So. Um, seeing who it is that opened the door, I would like to attempt a gnomish giggling surprise attack with my crossbow. <laughs> the giggliest gnomish. <laughs> uh, if yeah, possible. Go ahead. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I'll give you advantage because you were aiming uh, on the door before he came out. Cool. So 13 on low, 19 on high. Oh, yeah, you definitely hit on that high. Um, cool. Crossbow for me is going to be... a d8 plus four. So that will be five damage to him. Okay. As I stick him kind of in the forearm, I laughed a little bit too hard and got excited, missed my mark, and shot him in the arm. Um, as my arrow or my bolt hits him, however, uh, Omni gets really excited and lets out a mechanical bark and goes to attack him, so gets right up in his face in between us. Um, and with that, he will try to um, essentially, it's not a bite, but it's a, it's a melee attack. <laughs> right. so, he, so he whips his tail around and tries to break his shin. Um, so 
that will be a 14 to hit. Just hits. Just hits. Perfect. And that is a D8 plus 2. Perfect. So that is an A. That is 10. 10 to his shin. <laughs> Did more than my crossbow. Oh, same guy. Um, yeah, he did not like that. It looks like he is barely hanging on. Um, and he uh, recoils, like, after opening this door and expecting fire, just gets nailed with a crossbow. <laughs> Oi, what the, what is that? And then this strange mechanical dog starts running up to him and uh, just gives him that, like, it's, I kind of imagine that the dog like, jumps on him excitedly and then ends up hurting him in the process of it. Like, goes to say hello, and then these, like, wicked metal... Giant, yeah, giant, wiry arms just kind of dig into him for ten. And it just, like, it just knock, reels him back. He's just uh, not prepared for this, and not recuperating from it very well, either. Um, sure. Is there anything else you and your dog would like to do? Um, just as a reaction or bonus action can i see into the room at all as he's falling back um it's it's pretty dark you think you might be able to make out another one of these cloaked figures but that is about the limit of it cool that'll do it nice okay um see here back inside the bar Got a couple of these red brands who are going to make some palliation attacks. See here, this guy is going to run up and he makes an attack on Slidar. He hits with both of them. That's not great. Oh man. Slider takes a pretty good chunk of damage. Uh, it's like he was uh, watching uh, Parthenax do his roasting trick and kind of just turning some of these ruffians into um, charred uh, charred visages of what they once were. Um, and Slider doesn't notice as this other um, red band just steps forward and takes two attacks with his short sword on him. Um, he's not doing awesome there. Uh, and then we've got, let's see here, number three is going to step up. He's actually just going to go straight forward and try and uh, get a better vantage point on you guys. Sella, you are up, and then Sia, you're going to be on deck. All right. Parthenax did have a really good idea, so I'm going to pull out the little owl bear figurine. The only place in sight that's large enough for him to actually manifest is this table here. I don't know if I'm clicking that or not. Right here in the middle of the red brand guys. So I'm going to throw the owl bear statue to that table. The one behind them, right? Yes, the one behind like here. Them. Yes. You're fluffy, I choose you. <laughs> Those are not actually the magic words. <laughs> the magic words are... All right, and so she'll throw the thing, land on the table. Calendrogo Sarnflorosani and Owl Bear. Very nice. Um, yeah. McFluffy is now standing on the table, provided he did not crush it when he appeared. And he, uh, I believe he goes next since he's my summon. Yeah, but again, that's just the easiest way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Owlbear noises. <laughs> Man, my owlbear's not where I thought it was. That's annoying. Give me a second. Um, or you can continue with your turn. I'll have it in a second. That's fine. So you're, it, it should be an action to to summon the owlbear, right? Or is it a bonus action? I thought it was a bonus. Is it a bonus action? It doesn't actually specify on the equipment thing. Hmm. Usually, usually it's an action to like summon something of that 
that degree. I'm sure it is. I'm pretty sure it's a full round action. So you've got movement and bonus action. If there's anything else you'd like to do, and then your owl bear will be up next. And I'm just gonna, the table that we're currently in front of, I'm going to move over and be next to Thea so that I can help her flank if necessary. Nice. And now, yeah, that ends my turn for that part. I don't know where the owl bear fucking went. So we're just gonna fucking use a dire wall. Cool. Doesn't matter. Everybody knows what it is. And I'll make it so you can control this one so long. There it is on the table. All right. So McFluffy, the owl bear. That's what you need. I love it. It's an axe's fault. I like it. It's okay. <laughs> Big fluffy. Okay. Yeah, Big fluffy. <laughs> he has multi attack. The owl bear makes two actions one with its beak and one with its claws. So we're going to go ahead and do both of those. First, we'll do the beak. Who are you attacking? The one the... seven, the one right in front of it? I don't know yes. if you guys can see those nameplates. No. They're just like little numbers near him. Okay. Nope. Hey, Nick, okay. as a real quick aside, if you go uh, to free assets, dungeon master essentials, and go down to the letter O, there's an owlbear there. Thank you. I couldn't remember if it was in the familiars and summons or the freaking dungeon masters essentials. Yes. Okay. Sweet. Is your owlbear blonde or brunette? He's green. He's green. Oh, yeah, because of the stone. <laughs> but we'll go with a blonde, I guess. That's the only blonde. options. There's, I, there's like a light and a dark. I, so big. Like, mm -hmm. about that big. Still terrifying. Indeed. OK. Did you roll for your attacks? Not yet. I was waiting for you. Um, but I will roll now. First, the beak. That's a 16 Damn. to hit. Damn. Nice. Cool. And then it's 1d10 plus 5. He takes 7 points of damage. He's still standing. Pretty happily. Uh, how much damage? Seven. Seven. Um, a pretty solid hit, actually. That uh, that Redbrand didn't fully uh, take the hit, but he is still standing. And that was this guy right in front of him, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Number seven, I think you said, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then I will go ahead and swipe in with the claws too. Nice. Make another reason. Yep. That's a 21 to hit. No, that misses. Huh? <laughs> no, it misses. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go yeah. What's your damage? It's 2d8 plus 5. 15 damage. How much? Fifteen. Fifteen. Jesus. Uh, how do you want to do this? Okay, Fluffy really likes his theatrics because he spends too much time in my bag of holding. Um, he's just gonna like skewer the guy through the middle and throw him into the wall and make a large like Godzilla esque. <laughs> Screech of, screech of victory. Pent up aggression. Yes. Okay. Actually, you know what? You always towards, do that window. He's towards gonna the fireplace, or? He's gonna do what? He's gonna throw him through that window over there. Oh, which one? 
next to one of the fire, the red brands. Oh, yes. out that way. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a, <laughs> there's like a guttural growl that comes out of this owlbear as it picks it up and just like swings the red brand in its mouth and then just tosses <laughs> it out the window past its uh, red brand compatriots who got hit with the burning hands earlier. Um, and they both manage to get out of the way of their friend as they um, see him come flying by in front of them. And then there's a... Oh, that was a bad job. So roar. My throat's so dry. <laughs> it's like that T-Rex in the end of Jurassic Park after it ate all the velociraptors. We need a Godzilla voice clip. Yeah. The roar. Yeah. Uh, this is the closest thing I got. Perfect. Or maybe... <laughs> that was the red brand. Oh, okay. I thought that was angry. <laughs> no, that was the red brand. Okay. Uh, as he gets tossed, and then you're bare after. Sweet. McFluffy looks very satisfied with himself. He just kind of clicks his beak a couple times, looks at the next guy. And that's the end of his turn. <laughs> awesome. Um, Sia, you are up, and Ibru, you're going to be on deck. Okay. So I'm going to pull out a very large looking spider fang to turn into a giant spider. Mm. And I want to jump onto this guy and bite him. Which one again? I'm sorry. That one. Okay. So as all of this combat is ensuing and... Um... <laughs> Uh, Sela, as you move closer to your druid companion, uh, who has come to human form as this battle has ensued, um, just helps with the intimidation a little bit. Uh, you stand next to her to help, um, flank, and she turns into a giant spider <laughs> at your side. I'm not even going to change the size of this thing. Uh, Thea, you should be able to move it wherever you like. Uh, oh, that's crazy. That's awful. They're just, they're just these I'm glad legs. I'm over here. <laughs> they're just these legs that kind of foof, like out from her, and her body grows larger and much hairier. Um, Dexterity saving throw? <laughs> no, you don't have to. It's not like she kicks you out of the way. It's it's kind of like um like a fuzzy. My legs hug. are carefully pl- <laughs> a fuzzy. Uh, hug. I could just picture like the in between, like the like the halfway in the am- anamorph. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There is a moment where it's kind of like a, a gelatinous ball of kind Ew. of fun, and then the legs come out. Oh. Don't get hurt, <laughs> yeah, that's Hex. the goal. I was hoping I would scare these guys. Let's be honest. Hex would have shed his gnome pants. Yeah. So. <laughs> they do have. Uh... Yeah, I mean their their intimidation is high. But uh, would you like to try intimidate them with this? Is was that part of the? Uh, I mean, I can try to do that first, I guess. Yeah, I definitely was hoping you, that I could scare them. That what is you say, as fuck. What do you say before you turn into a spider? Like, yeah, because it's definitely uh, off-putting. But if your intent is to to intimidate, do you like say something before you turn into a spider at them? Like, run. <laughs> <laughs> run. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and make an intimidation check. Okay. Should it just be like Thea's intimid like well never mind, I'm just gonna roll yes, twenty. Yeah. I don't think you're I don't think the spider has an intimidation skill. I don't think so either. Let me see. Well here's to hoping. Fifteen? Uh plus That was with the plus. That's your total. That's your total. Okay, total. Yeah. Um see there's like at least four of them within like within direct area i'm like i'm thinking of the four closest to you so one on the carpet one near slidar and then the two that um parthenax had burning hands a minute ago um only one of them only one of them rolled well the rest of them rolled awfully so this guy is fine um these 
these three in front of you uh, are all frightened. They currently cannot move closer and have disadvantage on uh, attacks against you. We actually double read the thing on frightened. Frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of fear is within line of sight. The creature can't willingly move closer to the source of fear. So you do have them pretty pretty frozen in place now. Cool. It's going to be hard for them to attack you. Okay. Um, I want to try to bite that same guy that I first clicked on. Okay. It's the one in front of Umsela. Okay, totally. And so it looks like that's 1d8 plus 3. That's your for damage. Piercing. Oh, for damage. Okay, so the yeah. hit is... I just rolled a 20 for hit. Sorry, it's been a bit since I've gotten to play with you guys. You're good. Glad you're here. It's a 20 to, t to hit, right? Or is it something else? That yeah, I you rolled a 20. Okay, sorry. No, you're good, and then you'll add your hit modifier. Which... Do you need me to pull up the spider? You might be looking at a different one. one than me, so sure. Oh, okay. Are you? I, I don't remember what we decided on the wolf spider or the. This is the giant spider. Just giant the plane, spider. yeah. Oh, it's plus five. It says plus five to hit on mine. I had. I had a feeling that's what it was. Yeah. Okay, so I got a nineteen. So plus five. 19. Twenty-four. He's twenty-four. That's awesome. That definitely hits. Go deep. And there's so many giant animals. There are like four pages of giant things. <laughs> that is a, a that's awesome. And then you also get yeah, yes, to succeed a Constitution saving throw. Okay, cool. So yeah, this this giant spider uh, appears and then doesn't really even have to move forward. It's more or less just lumbers and lurches forward, and then the fangs go into this red brand. Um, what's your damage on it? Um, it's 1d8 plus 3, so I got a 6, so 9 total. Okay. How do you, how do you want to do this? Little two front legs and then meh. <laughs> so as uh, the spider lurches forward and the fangs uh, bury deep into the, the chest of this red brand, um, you guys do notice that he is one of the, he is the larger dude in here. He was kind of like the, the bruiser that they brought. Um, Nice. And the fangs, the fangs seep into him, and he starts to kind of cry out in pain, and then curl in, and he just is frozen, like oh. a like a statue. He's just stuck here, like a brittle, dry, like a Capri Sun, Capri Sun <laughs> that's just been kind of dried up. She did not eat him. She did not drink him. Just to throw that out there, the poison did dry him up. God. But he, it is, it's like that scene in the mummy a little bit where oh the guy just God, like shrivels no. and just dries out. <laughs> yes, go giant spider. Uh, now my entire good. party hates me and is worried that I'm going to turn into this in the middle of the night. It's fine. <laughs> Not even worried. You're so, you're the leader, actually. You've been officially named the leader of. This is, why, Wait. <laughs> this is why she's the leader. <laughs> she's the leader because she can do that. <laughs> he is done. I can either be adorable or horrifying. It's, it's just one of the two. Yeah, that's the, that's the best combo, though. Like, yeah. you were just that is the best thing. The whole last season. I know. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Seven is dead. Eight is dead. You guys have killed two guys so far before they even got to their turn. Um, we don't really even know what they're like. Why they're here? We are just like kill all of them. <laughs> you have a pretty good idea why they're here. They were yeah, truly but, but rude still, to us though. on the way in. Yeah. You you especially see it. No. No, why they're here. <laughs> My bad, guys. My bad. No, bravo. Uh, yeah, I don't think anyone is upset about it. <laughs> If Parsnax is like giving out all that little golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's gonna kind of take a scan around for a second and see that uh, Parthenax, you have moved to another spot and he is gonna try and move across the tables towards you. He does not quite get all the way. Um, he's like that, no. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't quite get all the way to you. 
does the owl bear like get a swipe? I feel like he had a cross within its zone of death. He, uh, that is a fair question. Sola, would you like your owl bear to get an attack of opportunity? I think I would love for him to get an attack of opportunity. As it's on the top of this table, kind of just like raging, looking around for another target. As soon as it sees movement. Uh, he will, you will try and claw him. So okay. that is five. This is a 15 to hit. Oh, actually, that would be plus another two. That's a 17 to hit. Oh. It hits. Oh, actually, awesome. does not hit this one. A 17? 17 does not hit this one. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Um, kind of scary. Okay. <laughs> I don't like that. Which one is she going for seems, again? He seems to dip out of the way. It's like as soon as he saw Parthenax, it's like he just started making like a mad scramble and dashing between the tables and dodging this uh, owlbear swipe as it, as it went along the way. But it's uh, this guy down near Parthenax. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, he doesn't quite all the way get to Parthenax. Uh, Iru, you are up. Um, as you have kind of just stolen this beer, um, it, seemed, it seems as you started sipping it, um, somebody had busted in and kind of started a ruckus. At first you thought maybe, oh shit, I, I'm sorry, I'll pay for this still. Um, they were coming in to you know, yell at you about taking a beer. Um, you turn around in your bar stool and there's just this kind of battle scene before you. You see a group of these red clad um, bandits attacking these patrons out of seemingly nowhere, um, what would you like to do? Okay, uh, should it be noted that in my initiative check, I rolled a one? Are, we, are there any crit fails or anything involved in this? No. Okay, okay, cool. All right, good enough. You choked um, on your beer a little. I was, okay, all right, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> you are much kinder than my last DM. This is crit take. Yeah, like, like I said, you're you're drinking it. You're you're you know about to enjoy a nice beer, and then uh, all these people busted in. <laughs> well, okay, so I guess. A little bit. So yeah, no, you know that you know that kind of scared that you get when you get scared like by a moth. You know, you're like a moth <laughs> flies by, and you're one. like you it scares the shit out of you, and then you get. You're, you know, I'm gonna kill that moth. Is gonna fucking die. There's no way. <laughs> I'm like not gonna be. Like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be terrified by a moth. So I, I uh, definitely got a little pissed off. So uh, <laughs> I am uh, looking at <clears throat> how you guys making circles, clicking these guys. Probably the, the one nearest down. Parthenax here. What's that? You just, you just click and hold down. Oh, look at that. Should make those rings. Okay, I see it. Okay. Uh, either way. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to beeline for this guy here, uh, and I guess I'm going for a basic attack here. Uh, I've got my hand axe. Nice. Handy. So what is that? 1d6. That's your damage. So you'll roll a 20. Plus oh, all right. So I need, to, I need to roll that first. Good enough. Sorry, it's been a minute. Oh, you guys are fucking me today. All right. So that's a three. Oh, plus seven though. Oh, okay. So that's ten, which still does not hit this guy. <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> so very dodgy. I uh, I come around, um, clearly shaken still from the massive spider that appeared on the other side of the room. Going, can a guy get a drink in peace? And then I look over and see that and completely miss my enemy altogether on the swing. Okay. Um, it, little tidbit to remember as a barbarian, you can rage, and that gives you advantage on your attacks. Good enough. So you rage as a bonus action, um, and you can do that. Action. You can do that before your action. Bonus action can be done kind of anywhere throughout your combat. Oh, good enough. All right. Well, I think I'll. Uh, I guess now at this point, I'm I'm thoroughly embarrassed. So I'm mad. I'm gonna. Can I? Can I break it? <laughs> Say that with a little more conviction. No, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So you you enter this rage. Um, and go ahead and go for another attack. You, uh, I'll let you do that this time. Usually, you gotta like 
do your attacks at the same time. Good enough. Well, I guess at the, in this moment, I guess my rage action is a frenzy attack, right? Which lets me make a single melee weapon, or is that out of turn at this point? It's been a long time, and I don't quite. I think that would be out of the out of the order, but okay. that's totally okay. Good enough. So I'm just gonna roll again here. Yeah. All right, let's go. Don't fuck me. All right, so 14 altogether. That's unfortunately still does not hit. Oh man. Um, leave it or n uh, is there anything else you would like to do? I think that's it. I am thoroughly embarrassed. There's not much I can do at this point. Um, Parthenax, you uh, are well out of combat range, and you see this red brand start to move for you uh, towards you. And out of nowhere, um, uh, a half orc gets up from the bar and comes over and starts attacking this um, bandit that was uh, charging towards you, and Although he misses, he does distract the um, the bandit that was coming for you, uh, takes his sights off of you, as it were. Um, believe it or not, uh, you are not the last one in initiative. Um, got two more of these guys to go. They are the slow pokes of the bunch. Um, you hear this guy. He's going to try and move around the owl bear. Go ahead and do another attack of opportunity, Stella. That sounds great. Okay. Nine. Ooh, that unfortunately does miss. Yep. Um, seems like the owl bear was kind of like focused on the spider a little bit uh, <laughs> more in this current moment. Um, and here. Uh, this guy is actually going to hold his action. Um, we're back at the top with Nikon, but I'm going to run to the bathroom just for two seconds. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Great opportunity to grab a beer. <laughs> Okay, Nikon. And then Parthenax, okay. you will be on deck. I'm going to attack this guy since he moves next to me, like to my side. I'm going to lunge in with my, my daggers, do a double attack on him. Okay. Rolling a 20. Got a 7. For the Ooh, unfortunately. One. That Missed. one does not hit. Okay. So rolling another d20 for the other one. Got 15. That just hits. Cool. All right. And that is a... What is it at? Megan, you do notice um, as you're uh, coming within combat range of uh, this bandit that the cloaks all cover different sets of like clothes and armor. It's like they, the only thing that is similar is the, the red cloth that they're wearing, which is a very cheap, tattered, mass-produced kind of cloth. And then underneath they are wearing like specialized custom armor specific for them. Got you. All right. Then roll. Got a three. With actual hit. Ooh. Unfortunately, that also does not hit. All right. 
Wow, I'm, I'm done, I guess. Bummer. Uh, that's all right, man. Um, let's see here. This this red brand. Uh, I wow. I didn't even re uh, roll Nacho into initiative. Um, about him. <laughs> I I did completely forget about him. Um, I, he went on a some sort of mission without us. That sounds accurate. Okay. Um, see here so this guy uh, he's afraid of he's afraid of the spider but still gonna try and make an attack i mean can't get closer but it'll be with disadvantage Killer. <laughs> two and a nine do either of those hit your spider armor class no uh, you have what 14. Cool. It was two and two and nine. You have a 14 for your uh, spider armor class. Nice. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> he makes a couple attacks um, and does not make it. See if he ooh natural 20 um, to you know what? I don't think you can roll out of a fear check. No, you can. Can't you, can't you? You can roll to not be afraid. Okay, yeah, you got a natural 20 on that one. So he is not afraid anymore, but already took his attacks. Um, and this guy was waiting for an uh, uh, oppor uh, opportunity to attack when his friend attacked. So he's going to do his attack. Two, uh, okay, so 16 to hit um, Sia in your spidery form. Six so he does six damage. With he only does word. six? Okay. Yes. Cool. Not bad. And then Parthenax, you are up. Right? Yep. Okay, so this guy that's charging after me is now distracted. Um, I can see that he's obviously hard to hit as he dodged the owlbear. Does he look special in any particular way? Um, uh, he's very small, very, very spindly. Like he's kind of, kind of a, a string bean sort of dude. So he's like kind of dodging and dipping and weaving. Not a whole lot to hit. Okay. Um, I'm going to move a little closer to the door, try and block off the exit, and then I'm going to hit uh, that guy with magic missile. I wasn't looking when you said that guy, sorry. For nine plus three is 12 damage. Okay. Which guy is the one that was running at you? I'm sorry. Nice. Okay. <laughs> yes, indeed, the one that was running at you. How do you want to do this? Um, I imagine he's running and uh, he gets hit by three bolts and it's kind of like in war movies when they get hit and then they keep trying to run and then they get hit by another one and then another one and then he's finally down. Um, yeah, as as a uh, the, the misses had happened on this guy from the half work. Uh, it's like he continued his venture towards you and mm -hmm. these magic missiles just hit and hit and hit before he just slowly slumps to the ground in front of you at your feet. Dead. And then I'm gonna look up to Iru, the large half work, and say Parsnax, Chark. Iru. Pleasure. <laughs> Y'all do this often? <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah, this okay. is a Thursday, you know. Okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do, Parthenac? 
Um, no, I just I just want to note that I'm trying to guard the door for anyone that wants to try and run. I want to try and block them with the quarter staff so they can't leave. Okay, very nice. Um, Hexagrim, you are up, and Sela, you'll be on deck. So has he? Has this dude moved? Does he get a turn, or do I just whoop this guy? <laughs> and yeah, I, I had actually totally spaced out that part. Uh, we'll just do that. We'll just do that meow. Put you in a little side in the shade. Um, we'll say we'll say that you do get to, get to go first. You had the you were ready on the action. You you were had everything planned. He was definitely not on his game. Cool. So my dog doing the ten last last turn. I figured it out. I think he was wanting to play fetch with the bolt that lodged in his arm. So he saw the bolt hit his arm, and he just clamped down on his arm trying to get the stick. That being said, um, I kind of I need him to <laughs> either perish or bust open that door. So the door is open behind you. He didn't like walk out and close it. He he opened it, and then you had that ready to hit, and so you shot him. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am going to take a five foot so that I am kind of uh, to the side of my dog. Uh, can I move my little dude? You, you should be able to. If you click on your guy and then scoot him over, or you might have to click my, on it. My dog, but not my dude. Okay. Yeah, I did not. Is that a thing? Yeah. There we go. I'll take a five foot. So I do like a little skip hop. And um, again, I kind of point my sleeve in his direction. And um, I start cranking on my forearm. There's a little knob. And all of a sudden, it starts brewing this gas and and mechanical sound kind of whirling from my arm. And I'm going to attempt to hit him with a firebolt. So. Are those at uh, six? Disadvantage when you're close? I don't think the spells are. Only like arrows and shit. It's, it's a cantrip. Yeah, those, the cantrips don't usually have that minimum range. Yeah, it's just 120 feet. You're good. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. So uh, it will be an 18 to hit. Definitely hits. Cool. So that's a D10. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I'm cranking this, um, you start hearing this whirling, and I aim my hand and I push the knob in and this giant bolt of fire just brands his side um, for let's see for seven damage. How do you want to do this? So um, the dog's got him by one arm and the dog's happy as can be just whipping him around with the stick um, and I just do my little gnomish hop over, twist it, push it in, and blast him with this fire, um, just catching him on fire and, like, remnants of his, his red cloak just kind of ember into the room. And the dog kind of just sits and looks into the room and looks at me as if I'm going to throw another stick for it. <laughs> um, very, very nice. Yeah, he only... is... Uh... He's a toasty pile of, of ash at this point. Um, it's like as the, the, the cloak kind of burns, it's like the heat lets it rise up and then the rest of it just like kind of disintegrates. You guys ever seen a tea bag do that? Light, set a tea bag out so you light the top of I it. I tea bagged him, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. 
in most instances i would be like no <laughs> <laughs> but this is the but that was that was pretty good <laughs> i didn't even think about it like that <laughs> um for my dog would it be possible to move him in the room can he walk in there yeah cool I'm are you in. do you have a like a psychic link are you able to see through his eyes or anything like that no not really <laughs> But um, he has way more hit points than I do, so I think he'll manage for a turn. What What do you want him to go? What do you want him to do when he goes in there? Kind of just scout out. He's just gonna. I mean, he's not going far in. He's just opening up that room um, for me to go in behind him. Okay. Um, yeah. No, your dog gets in there and and barks a couple of times. Um, you hear you hear a, a voice. Oh, what what the hell's that? <laughs> he's. I would like to think he's standing on the ash pile, so he looks really menacing. Oh, totally. Yeah, he's he's like just on the other side of the door, basically. Then weird. Yeah, so it's like you you can kind of still see him. Cool. Right in the ash. <laughs> <laughs> right in the ash. All right. Okay. Um, is there anything else you like to do? Okay, cool. Then red brand two and three here. So two is gonna take another couple tacks at Slider. Actually, Slider is gonna. Uh, cause I didn't put him into initiative. <laughs> so it was about there, this time there, last turn that he took a move. Okay, I forgot to write him down. Then that would make a little bit more sense. Yeah. So Slider is just uh, kind of locked in combat with this guy. Lighter does make some uh, headway there, uh, like he's blocking the attacks now. He's actually focused on uh, the combat, with, uh, getting some hits in on this guy. Six. So kind of, it's like um old school movie short sword battle where slider has got this rapier defending off a short sword, and, like poking him in the appropriate places as he's fending off the board par or, uh, sword parrying in the appropriate places. Um, does some pretty decent damage to him. And then this red brand number three is going to take uh, attacks at you, Nikon, with his short sword. Mm -hmm. Here. Um, does uh, dirty 20. Oh. Unfortunately. Yeah. Or uh, five points of damage. Uh, you can see like a um, bit of a vengeful fury in this uh, bandit's eyes as uh, he's going to attack you. Um, see here, Sela, you are up, and then Thea, you're going to be on deck. I'm just going to attack the rapiers. I'm going to step up to this guy. And roll for my rapier attack. Um, I roll a nat one. Ooh. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the spider legs are kind of just like messing up your footing um, as you're trying to like step down off of this table to get a vantage point on this guy. Um, Uh, so, for the natural one, I'll just say you're currently at disadvantage. Um, if you want to make another attack or like a skill check or anything, you'll be at disadvantage for it. Okay. Um. My bonus action, I will go ahead and... Disengage. Disengage okay. would be an action. Damn. Okay. Then I'm just going to give Thea a bardic inspiration. Nice. And hope for the best. <laughs> How do you inspire? How does one inspire a giant spider? Pets. Foot pets. 
that hairy leg. <laughs> As I fall on my ass with very little elvish grace, I just like grab one of her legs <laughs> and I'm like, I am out of me. <laughs> oh, Mia, you can do it. I know you can. God, this is weird. <laughs> Never pet a Bristle. spider before. Fitness. Never pet a giant I spider do. before. It is not an experience I've ever had before. That is very strange. <laughs> so, Thea, you have a D6 that you can add to an ability check or attack roll uh, or saving throw. Okay. Um, let's see. For my first action, I'm going to shoot a web at this guy. Okay. So that it restrains him. Cool. So that's a deck save, I believe. Oh, okay. No, range weapon attack plus five to hit. So go ahead and roll a natural t- or a, a d20. <laughs> Hopefully it's a 20. Yeah, that's roll a, a natural 20 on that. <laughs> <laughs> please, natural 20, please. Um, it's a 13 total. Uh, that unfortunately does not hit. Damn. This guy's tough. Can I use that bardic in- inspiration? <laughs> yes, you can. Technically, I already told you it doesn't hit, so you, it would be a no. But oh, okay. we don't do the bardic inspirations too often. So yeah, go ahead. So should I just add that or should I re-roll? You, you roll the d6 and you add that to whatever your total was. Oh, the d6. Okay. Sixteen total. So sixteen total will do it. Okay. <laughs> Woo! That that does indeed uh, stick him to the wall. And Nikon, as you're kind of in combat with this guy, um, out of nowhere, just this sticky, strange gray mass just kind of hits him. And it just, sounds uh, so gross. <laughs> and just like pulls him up off his feet and attaches him to um, the upper half of this fireplace. It's like his legs are dangling just above the fireplace, but his torso and everything is caught up. He was just in combat position and then <laughs> just like wrapped up in it um, and is now stuck up on the wall. So he yeah. didn't take any damage, correct? He's just being held? He does not take damage, I don't believe. Targets are... No, okay. it's just restraint. Okay, it's mm-hmm. good to know. So he can make a strength check on his uh, next move, or on his next turn. So but, it is possible for him to leave, to escape from it? It is possible. Okay, well, damn. But at least he's there for now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And your turn is before his. Cool, so even better. Um, I so mean, for my you, wouldn't, second... you wouldn't know that. That's a, that's a little meta, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. You might want to keep one alive. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Let's talk to him while he's being held. Um, for my second action, I'm going to attack that guy. Bite him. I don't think you have multi-attack. Do I not as a spider? I don't think so. I think you would get... Um, just your basic movement action, bonus action, and then the web attack and then the bite attack are both actions. Okay, so I just get the one. Okay. You just get the one. But that's a really good move. Um, would you like to move yourself anywhere? Uh, can I, like, jump on top of somebody <laughs> as a move without, like, attacking them just, like, as a... <laughs> giant spider <laughs> yeah exactly. uh sure i would i would i would say make an athletics check okay <laughs> that's kind of crazy i'm pretty sure if i'm moving anywhere is this thing i'm gonna i'm gonna like knock some people over and stuff <laughs> but let's see um you said acrobatics or athletics um, I mean? yeah athletics. Okay, athletics okay 19 total. Okay. Where are you trying to go? I want to land like on top of 
this guy and this guy. Both of them? Yeah. Because <laughs> they're so close together. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay. So, uh... <sighs> it's like you... Like, almost kind of uh, commanding this whole fight at the moment. You just, like, web up one... Which, you know, from the red brand side, it's kind of like this is like some boss fight that they just walked into where there's like these <laughs> minions and then a giant spider that's like... <laughs> um, and then just a dragon off somewhere casting spells, like, yeah. Anyway. Um, a massive so, owlbear. Yeah, Sela. fluffy death. We did kind of just skip the owlbear. We'll, we'll get that to that one after this. Uh, Ellie, yeah, uh, and Thea, you guys are right next to each other. But... Um, Thea, you, or um, Sully, you are, we're just uh, engaged in combat with these uh, red brands, and you know that the spider is to your back. Um, but after petting her, it's like all of it just kind of moves so quickly, you can't even keep track of what legs are going where. Um, <laughs> and she just jumps past, past you and just jumps over these two red brands. Uh, <laughs> Are you on the wall and now? Like, it's just yeah. massive spider <laughs> on the wall. Oh. Now on the wall, kind of like the web across behind her. Um, she's jumped forward and is now, like, pinning all of them to the wall, kind of making herself a giant spider web, holding them. Um, so they, they're kind of, you know, stuck underneath you, but they're not um, incapacitated, <laughs> really. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? I think that's your whole action. No. Okay, uh, Sela, what, what, what would the owl bear like to do? As he slowly sees his prey just like being swept away in front of him, he gets a little frustrated. Um, he's oh, going yeah. to. I actually have a telepathic link with him, so I'm going to tell him to attack this guy who is fighting with Slidar. You, you can move him over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Owl bear noises. Um, and we'll do claws first. Fifteen. That hits. Awesome. Okay, two D eight. That's five. I think. Yeah. Uh, he does 13 damage. Oh my god. How do you want to do this? Yeah. You know, Mr. Fluffy kind of just has a style at this point. He, uh, he wants to make it as gory as possible because he's just like that. And so he picks the guy up, crushes his ribcage, and throws him wow. to the left. <laughs> And the, the whole party direction. hears a crunching noise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh -huh. he just kind of chucks this thing, uh, this dude across, and he just like lands kind of cattywampus in the the bench across, um, <laughs> kind of just being a rag doll, many bones, no longer one solid piece. Damn, okay. good job. Okay. Uh, Iru. Before we start, I just wanted to say kudos on, on the word cattywampus there. But that was <sighs> oh, thanks. phenomenal. <laughs> okay, so I guess my next move is I'm going to go after... I'm going to go after this guy over here. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, why ain't you working? That guy. There we go. Um, I'm going to just move around the table, run right at him, and uh, go for an attack. Nice. So you are still raging. Yes. So you, I you have advantage. Um, good. Oh, good come on. Your character over there when, after you uh, go and roll. All right. Here we go. Come on. How do I grab my guy? This whole thing is very new to me. Sorry, you should just like be able to click on it once, and then it'll kind of pop click up, on. and then you should be able to scoot him. Hmm. No, that's I got you. You're good. Thanks, guy. Okay, let's see. 
Uh, so that's a 15. Uh, on the uh, first attack. That, uh, that'll hit. Okay, so then I am looking at 1d6 plus 5. So that's 8 altogether. Nice. And then I will go for the uh, bonus action frenzy attack. Nice. Uh, do I roll the 20 for this move as well? Yes. All right. 14. That just hit. All right. So then I am looking at a 5 plus 5. That's 10. Ooh, how do you want to do this? Rip. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I will, uh, oh man, let's see, I guess theatrics aren't really, they're new to me guys, sorry, it's been a no. hot minute since I've played, let's see, no, so I cool. think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna swing down my first attack, I'm aiming for the collarbone with my hand axe, and I just get a solid plant right in there, Six. and then I will rip that guy out pull back and swing for the other collarbone and cut him <laughs> clean in half. In so one, in, in an stroke. unusual move of decapitation, you have more created a bust than <laughs> kind of taking the head off. You cut down into the uh, clavicles and down into the, the chest. And so it's like with one solid kick, you could almost like break the sternum and just get this like head off. But it's like it's kind of wobbling and he just like falls over and you can see down into the, the chest cavity, the, the lungs and the heart. <laughs> probably, the, probably the bloodiest kill appropriately by the barbarian um, of this all. You guys just uh, kind of see a little pool of Were there blood. other people in this tavern with us by any chance? <laughs> nope. No, it was just us. Okay. It was just you guys. Bartender wasn't even there today. <laughs> yeah, so are Something we was initiative? up. Say what? Are we still in initiative? Yeah, you guys just have a, there's a there's couple more dudes. Three left, yeah. Yeah. Where? Under me is two, two. and then in the web is one. Oh. Mm -hmm. and, and the then, two underneath me aren't like incapacitated or anything. I'm just kind of blocking them from hurting you guys. Yeah, they're, they do still have a, a turn. Meat shield. So, yeah, they... <laughs> Well, there's not really like spider meat. It's more like shit in his boo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Technically, if you get a big enough spider, it's kind of like cracking open a crab. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> that actually would be the most accurate, probably. They're both arachnids. Unfortunately, yeah, they, they actually are. Um... Okay. Yeah, for uh, kind of sake of brevity, we're actually going to just hop over to Hexgrim. You guys do have things kind of calmed down um, here in the tavern um, under control, definitely. Um, Hexgrim, you just sent your um, mechanical companion into this room. Um, you did hear at least one voice uh, shout out in curiosity over strange thing that just walked in. Sure. Um, so I would like to follow behind him, um, crossbow drawn. And see what I see. So you walk in, and you see uh, basically the tap room um, where barrels are kept, and you see two. Um, patrons or possibly owners of this bar, you believe, um, tied up, and then one red brand uh, looks like he is about to make an attack yeah. on your mechanical compatriot. Um, does 21 hit? My dog friend? Yes. Yes, that does. So he does six points of damage. Six points of piercing damage as a, a short sword comes out and it's kind of like a defensive poke. Let's stay awake. Nope. Down. Um, 
then so, it was you. Okay. So as he's poking, um, I'm going to go ahead and just shoot him. I'm just going to shoot him. Um, <laughs> I'm so just going to fucking shoot him. Yeah, I'm just going to shoot him. Um, so as he's poking, I'm just aiming up the old crossbow. And that will be a 15? Definitely hits. Oh, thank gosh. Okay. Crossbow, 15. That's each. So that'll be eight damage. Um, as I kind of hit him right in the shoulder that he is messing with my dog with. Um, and then for my steel defender, I would like him to use... Um, so I am kind of confused. I haven't really used reactions. Is it similar to a bonus action? Reactions happen uh, not on your turn. So a reaction would be... Um, when? In place of something else happening outside of your turn, typically somebody moving in and then out of your um, your hitbox, your combat zone, um, is when you get that attack of opportunity. Or reactions are like when you get hit by something, or if you okay. saved an action and said, That's oh, "When when this happens, I want to do this." So I will ask this then: Can I use his action this turn? And then he has a reaction of deflect attack. Can I use that at the end of my dog friend's turn? Okay. So that, that deflect attack, I think, would be when he gets attacked. Yeah, so the defender imposes disadvantage on the attack roll of one creature it can see within five feet of it, uh, provided the attack roll is against a creature other than the defender. So that would be if he decided to go for me. Basically, yes. Yes. Cool. So your dog would be able to react to uh, something else being attacked. And give him disadvantage, essentially. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I will go ahead and have him... Um, he's not really concerned with the object that is stuck in him. He looks more like he wants to grab it and shake it. <laughs> so he will attempt to do that and clamp down on his hand as well and shake him a bit. Okay. Uh, that will be a 13. 13. That does not hit. He misses. Just misses. And um, I will have him ready a reaction for if he should pull out and go for me. Okay. It definitely is. Cool. And that will do it. Okay. Um, he's just going to make an attack on this dog again. Sorry, so quick. Okay, wow. Rolls a 17 again, so 21. Goes, goes for another two. And it uh, does four damage. And it's kind of like a tug of war thing, but with a very <laughs> sharp object that this dog is trying to go for his hand and he's like trying to dodge it but the sword is already kind of up in your dog's grill. So it's like, he's kind of just jabbing Sawing. it. In there. Yeah. A little bit as your dog's trying to open mouth, grab it. He's just kind of stabbing it around the, the face and stuff. Um, okay. Not, not getting really too much headway in way of damage, but. Um, sure. Nonetheless. I'm going to go ahead and ready up my fire bolt again. So nice. crank in the arm. Popping it out, the whiz of the gas and the fumes as I crack my fingers. You can hear the crackle of the fire as well. And that will be a 19. Which definitely hits. And fireball is just a 19. Sweet. And that will be a 9. So 9 damage right in his face. <laughs> How do you want your doggo to do this? Um, the dog himself. So uh, he wins the tug of war. So 
he clamps down on the blade, and as he pulls the blade, uh, the reluctant bandit, not letting go, gets pulled just right into the main blast from my firebolt, uh, leaving not much left of his upper half as far as it's just like a burning, smoldering, disgusting mess, and the dog is holding the remnants of his hand and the sword in his mouth. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, so uh, you, you, things do quiet down a little bit after um, this guy is uh, taken out and you are able to kind of like take stock of, of this room and everything and you, uh, you notice that there are two tied up, seems innocent people, um, just kind of in either corner uh, and these red brands were trying to just kind of keep them quiet uh, for the moment Sure. Um, have I heard the commotion that is in the main tavern? You you totally have heard um, some goings ons that are not your situation right now. Uh, you definitely My, have heard that's... some roars, some screams, a <laughs> um, little bit of like some embarrassed screams. <laughs> um, <laughs> My, that yep. sounded like a bandit flying out a window, if I am <laughs> correct. <laughs> okay, um, so I would like to kneel down and on. We'll do this, dude. Um, I'm just going to quickly slit off his mouthpiece. And I'm going to tell him, hey, I don't know what's going on here. I came in the back uh, and I roasted these two, but there's a bunch of commotion going on. So just stay here. And I'll undo his arms, but not his legs, just his arms. Uh, okay. You can untie her, but, you know, stay here. It's not safe. And I will actually leave uh, Ami here okay. to guard. And I will slowly There's approach door. this door. Yeah. There's a door right here. Uh, as you untie this man um, and take the mouthpiece off, he uh, takes a couple of deep, deep breaths. First oxygen he's gotten in a little bit. Um, Thank you. Thank you, sir. My, my name is uh, Tolbin. I, I appreciate you so much. I, uh, remind me to give you a, a free beer if you uh, come through again later. I, I, I can't appreciate, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Aw, oh, Torn Barn, you're okay. And I'll just <laughs> kind of... Tolbin. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll just whimsically kind of make his way up to peer through the door. Uh, yeah, you, you can see... Um, yeah, you see what looks like a small battlefield on the inside of this tavern uh, is a very, very large open room. Um, just on the other side of this door is a bar that you can see um, liquors kind of spread out in taps uh, and things like that. And on the other side of that bar, you can see tables that have been disheveled. Um, there's not really a fire burning, but there's definitely like charred wood in places and uh, little bits of embers kind of like slowly going out in the, the floorboards. Um, it looks like there are people kind of tossed around. There's a guy just uh, limpidly hanging uh, off of one of the uh, benches. Kind of looks like a standard t a tavern, actually. The more you look at it, the more it's like, oh, yeah, nothing actually too crazy <laughs> going on at the moment. Uh, and then giant fucking giant, spider. Giant yeah. fucking <laughs> spider. <laughs> Owl so, uh, <laughs> back, yeah, you, there's just a, a strangely... Um, crystalline looking owlbear uh, in the middle of this, this room as well, uh, so and a giant spider. He's definitely scared, and I would like to hide um, <laughs> somewhere behind these barrels <laughs> and go watch. And, <laughs> go ahead and make a stealth check. Good choice. This is when we all pause and turn and look. <laughs> right. Uh, that'll be a 15. Okay, oh, wait a bad. second. Hold on, I might have lied. Might have lied. I did lie. Hold on. I have disadvantage on stealth checks. Yeah, I, mean, I was trying to think, like, you have an advantage on a couple of things, but the, the stealth is not one of them. Sweet. Uh, 15, actually, is lower than a 19, so. Okay. Um, so... I just want to check something real quick on all of you guys, see if maybe any of you would notice this passively. Perception as well. Yeah, that is what I was looking at. 
Do you want us to roll? Um, no. <laughs> Everyone. To... <laughs> Stop. This the one is uh, this one is passive, so you guys don't actually have to roll for it. Mine's um, a plus six. Mine's a plus six too. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at your looking at your passive <laughs> perception skills. Well, yeah, Nikon and mm, Thea, you are in spider form, and you are currently guarding these two dudes. Uh, Nike, you... times, you know, spider noises. Times, you know, uh, yeah, going to be enhanced. percent more eyes. Yeah. Uh, Nike, <laughs> you do uh, just notice ever so subtly out of the corner of your eye across this eyes. bar that a door had opened and closed, it seemed. And that's all you really saw was just like a... of yeah. the, the back doors. Um, but that was it. Um, um, the rest of you guys do have this room uh, quite under control. Um, Thea, the two um, bandits underneath you are still trying to make stabs with um, with their swords as they're over top of you. Um, you do take two hits uh, for ooh, one of those was a six. Um, plus two, so eight and seven. Um, 15 points of piercing damage. Okay, I'm still okay in spider form anyways. But they are, they are um, trying pretty hard to try and get you off of them best that they can. Um, what would you guys like to be doing? I will say that you guys are out of initiative uh, for the moment, but okay, uh, these guys I... are, are still trying to get you. Can I... Uh, shoot a web at both of these guys like below me to stick them to the ground. I had a feeling that that's what you were going to do. Yes, uh, go ahead and make a, uh, um, a, a ranged attack, but with advantage since you are directly on top of them. Twelve plus. Five. Hey, you can uh, change the AC total. too. If you want. What was it? 17. It's 17 total without... Um... Hey, remind me about this later. Yes. No, you you uh, you totally web them up. You just kind of like hawk a web loogie on them. <laughs> um, after they stab you a couple times. Like, you know what? <laughs> and just uh, unleash this like kind of spray of web. Uh, it doesn't come from your mouth, but as a giant magical spider, it does. That's not how, you know, spiders make webs. But <laughs> this one, it does. And everyone throws up in disgust. <laughs> I'm good. I've been kicked by you a few times now, so it's like... Oh. <laughs> Gently. I made sure those legs were like, you know. <laughs> I'm just like, this is weird. This is weird. This is what I expect. I expect weird on an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, she's turned into how many things by now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys are all out of combat. Um, Slidar wipes the sweat off his brow. My, that was that was quite an adventure. Uh, a quite a battle. I, I'd hope we wouldn't see those red brands for quite some time, but apparently we've upset them quite a bit. Perhaps it's not safe here. Perhaps we're causing too much trouble in this town. Perhaps we need to move more quickly than we, we expected. I'm going to walk over to one of the ones in the web and just kind of stick my quarterstaff where I think his stomach is um, and be like, I'm not really worried. They keep sending them and we just keep knocking them down. Yes, that may appear to be true for right now, but the other numbers may uh, outweigh us. This could have possibly been just a test sending the hounds, as it were. I kind of want to waddle out there and just look at him. <laughs> oh, he's nice. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's like a dog, but I'm a spider. <laughs> as as I can, um, after watching it and as it all calms down, I'd like to climb up on one of these barrels and um, throw down two <laughs> mugs of drinks, really, really? like pronouncedly. And look up, and all you can kind of, it looks almost like a child, uh, just looking up. A child just decked in really nice armor with a shield and a, and a pretty okay beard. 
Um, <laughs> just between two mugs. So what are you guys drinking? The first I hope thing that they don't says, shoot me. <laughs> first thing Sella says is, oh no, not another one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I look back and I'm like, and I look to the party or at least the ones I know and I'm like, is that? No. No, 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 no. Higgles wore chain mail. That one's wearing plate armor? Scale and he was a drunk idea. too. Can I point to the large mugs he just put on the, the bar? Can I like <laughs> shoot a spider web out and then like grab a mug and as it's coming back to me, turn back into a human? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna <laughs> freak out. <laughs> <Pretty cool. laughs> I want to do that, but our DM is not present right now. Wait, what? He did. He did a poof. Yeah, he was Puffed. choking. Yeah, he was dying a little bit, yeah. Yeah. He's vomiting from your spider form. <laughs> <laughs> hey, got a question for you guys. Do you guys remember how many guys that, uh, or how many men there were? Was it like 20 something? Oh, Wasn't it? It, like, they said it was in that fort? Yeah, yeah. Like 22, wasn't it? I think it was way more than that. Yeah, I thought was it was it? a lot more than that. And then plus Damn. they said there was okay. something about an eyeball monster. Yeah, and then the oh, wizard no. or sorcerer, something like I that. I have thoughts on that eyeball monster. I want yeah, to me too. <laughs> I don't think it's Beholder. Let's hope not. Yeah, right. Ugh. There are other eyeball monsters those are mu that are more common. So, Cell has been kind of mi mulling this over the last couple days, thinking, I know there's other monsters in Volo's Guide. It might not be. It can't be a beholder. It just can't. We need more information from the red brand to see other characteristics of the monster. We've got three of them right now. Yes, we do. So. We can't wait to interrogate them. It's going to be grand. Hmm. Once the DM returns. I'm totally going to do that beer thing. <laughs> no, you, you totally That'd be cool. <clears throat> He's back. Basically, I heard I basically heard a Spider Man kind of move with like Yes. <laughs> spider Thea. Yeah, I'm gonna do that and then as I catch it, I'm gonna like sit down cross legged right on that bench right next to where I was a spider. Make <laughs> make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, come or, on. <laughs> or or a sleight of hand. Sleight of hand check. Or uh yeah. Sleight of hand or dexterity check. For just like a normal check or a saving throw? So yeah. you'll just use your dexterity modifier. So it's not necessarily a saving throw because the effect. Oh, okay. But yeah, just your dexterity modifier. And it'll be up to you. you if you want to use your dexterity or uh, make it a sleight of hand. I'm trying to find that on my character sheet. Oh, your dex is like your core modifier. So, like, you have a plus three to dex. Or your sleight of hand is plus four. You oh, we'll just do that one then. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong character. Hmm. No. <laughs> you have a plus three to dex. 18 sleight of, total. Your sleight of hand is plus three. 18 total. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you do manage to grab this beer. Um, spilling little to all to almost none of it like what you do spill just kind of like glides over the edge of the glass and drips down yes i filled that one a bit full <laughs> uh and i am shocked but i will quickly re regain my composure uh i think tillamook is back here he he was tied up along with his wife i believe or somebody if you guys want to come take a look i'm harmless Ami, and I'll call my dog out. <laughs> He'll come running up, and I'll kind of jump on him and ride him like a horse. <laughs> so I see your steel defender, and my dragonborn craw is just a gate, just like, <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> so, yeah, I will uh, ride him up to you guys, and then... <laughs> Can I attempt to be cool and like jump off him and land on a table with a check? 
Uh, yeah, make an acrobatics. Oh, shit, not gonna be good. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, <laughs> that's a solid three. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's just above, like... It's not a one. I didn't hurt myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. Um, <laughs> somebody drawing a spider web? Dope. Um, so, yeah, as uh, as this small gnome is uh, kind of hopping over the bar to come greet you guys, he tries to make an impressive flip onto the table and uh, just just doesn't land, like... It's like his foot goes, but then the rest of him kind of hits too. And there's like a, a quick floop as he pops back up, um, kind of ignoring what, what basically just happened. You almost can't tell that he fell. He, it, it, all of him is so close to the ground as it is that it may have just been like a tumble. Like he did a, he did some kind of strange gnomus roll. One never knows with gnomes. Most, most of what you've seen so far of this character is nothing of uh, what you guys see on a day-to-day. Um, all of the attachments to his armor and clothes um, look to be imported, for lack of a better term. Almost um, steampunkish. Oh, cool. Lots of copper and brass and leather work and smoke coming out of my <laughs> armor. I'm a very weird looking gnome. Okay. Could you change my spider back into human form, please? Yeah, sorry. No, you're good. So this gnome seemed useful. I'm going to say sort of gesturing at his accoutrement and steel defender. And this half-orc fellow was quite polite and nearly decapitated someone. I feel like they'd be a good hand on our mission. Gee, thanks, fella. <laughs> so what do you guys have against these bandits? Well, they wanted me to pay five gold. Oh, Inconceivable. They threw one into the stratosphere. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was like a suborbital. Oh my god. <laughs> Rumor has it he still has a palm back there. there. He never will. Good. It was a very team rockets blasting off again thing, you know. Fantastic. Um there's two new people here. That's interesting. I, uh, I'm not actually going to say anything for the time being. I'm just going to sit and sip on the beer. <laughs> um, well, as everything's happening, I'd like to kind of slowly make my way over to this webbed one. Is he webbed or is he dead? Just I think we've got three of them webbed. The ones yeah. in white are webbed. webbed. Stop. Well, so this one is webbed, and then there's two ah. right here that are webbed. Cool. I'll slowly make my way over here. They've been giving me and Ami a hard time for about weeks now, trying to get a hold of my contraptions, and I just won't let them. And I'll kind of stare at him in, in the web and poke at him a little bit. Names, name's Hex. You and you're introducing yourself to the guy in the web. No. Thea, <laughs> <laughs> hold in the mug up. Stop. Sella just gives him kind of a surly look, and she's just like, I don't... Mm-mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Um... So, Hex, it's nice to meet you, but, um... 100% of the gnomes we've known have exploded. So pardon if we uh, keep a little distance or you seem like a kind fellow, but um, the last one was a bit of a drunk and that might have been the reason for his combustion. We're not totally sure. Well, we do How tend do to do explode? that. <laughs> it is common. I had a cousin, let me tell you. <laughs> 
Right at a wedding, in fact. It was awful. <laughs> uh, I haven't exploded yet myself. Um, <laughs> and I kind of, I like hit some patches on my armor and it kind of like changes. Like the armor is super weird. It like changes form into kind of like dress wear. Um, I'm kind of a special gnome. I, I build a bunch and I, I build my own armor and and uh, you should have saw what I did to the poor fellow that opened the door. I, I made him think it was a fire and shot him. <laughs> so uh, no exploding here. Not for me at least. Not now. Points for the fire. Points for the initiative. I like it. I like it. Extra points for not exploding. <laughs> and uh, your your creature? Oh yeah, that's Ami. And Ami will kind of run over to my side. He's a, well, he, he's a special one. I'm still working out some kinks on him, but he's been my best friend since I got here. I've been building him for many years now, and he's got a little bit of everything in him. He just kind of like, almost looks like he's going to break down. <laughs> uh, and he's not in battle. He looks really rough. He's, the, he's a work in progress, and I kind of start hammering his head a little bit. <laughs> as the dog, like, runs up and you start introducing and kind of, like, taking care of him, um, the red brand behind you has been struggling in the, the web long enough that it breaks out and just the sword, short sword immediately goes from you. I feel like it would go from in, and he immediately goes out to get you. <clears throat> and your dog, being up in your face and seeing what's happening behind you, immediately reacts and lunges out. Uh, at this dude, and it's remind me its reaction real quick. Uh, that is how it would go down. Deflect attack, so the defender imposes disadvantage on the attack roll of one creature mm. it can see. Okay. So, he deflects it away. <laughs> the the other one was a 20. He deflects it away. <laughs> and, uh... This kills me right there. <laughs> just kind of, um doesn't necessarily maul him, but just jumps on him excitedly enough to like knock him back. Um, but he is just like free and openly uh, swinging again. If you weren't quite so short, he'd probably be going chest area, but he's just like wildly swinging above your head at this moment. Um, I was gonna so say... I'll have comically bad reaction time and <laughs> I'll get a couple good swings before I like realize and kind of duck and tumble <laughs> off to the side here. <laughs> Nikin, would you like to do anything? You are the closest one to him. I'll give you uh, the first opportunity. Can he actually hit us? Yeah, he's broken out of this web. The the dog is is on him, um, or it is, is probably off of him at this point, um, okay. as the dog deflected the attack. Um, and he's He's now open and kind of ready, looking for a target. Okay. Yeah, I'll do my uh, my bitching bolt again on him. And I totally heard bitching bolt. Bitching. <laughs> Bitch bolt. Bitching bolt. Bitching bolt. Bitching. Same thing. Uh, Seventeen. Does it land? Uh, yeah. Okay. And um, how many points does it do? A D twelve. Ooh, this this guy has not taken a single hit besides the web, by the way. Yeah. A six. That that does a pretty solid hit. He um cool. he recoils. Will um, it be a plus three also? Just curious. Is that a six? I don't I don't think Roll so. The plus okay. the plus three's on the attack, not the damage. Okay. okay. But uh he just like recoils back and then looks up in pain. Oh, you all are gonna pay from the red brand. I won't be the last one. Uh, he charges towards the gnome. Mm -hmm. Does uh, fuck. Can can McFluffy do something? A little bit uh, out of the way. Uh, I would say yes. Yeah, he would probably have the next. I was going to say, I'd, I'd like to jump in if I can get an opportunity here. I, I figured in this moment, I, I just throw an axe right at him. I know it's a strength <laughs> check, so figure mm -hmm. I'd give her a go. Go ahead and do a strength check. All right. I mean, it'd be an attack roll, but 
use strength on this one as it's a reaction. Oof. All right, that's only an 11. So you do you do hurl your axe, but it's like it, it goes just past his head as he moves over to uh, try and attack you. God head. damn, this dude's fast. Does a 14 hit? It does not. So as I as I regain myself and kind of flex, my armor changes form again, and my shield kind of forms with it, and I just bash off his head. Yeah, Slider is kind of uh, dazed watching everything uh, that's happening. He took a little more damage than anybody else in this uh, battle. Would you like McF- King Fluff, McFluffy? King Fluff. That was one of the names I had written down. I don't know where <laughs> that one came from, but it was, I had it written down. McFluffy is the one we settled on, I think. Okay. It just happened. Um, I, yeah. McFluffy sees blood. Yeah. on this red, this red guy. And uh, McFluffy is a beast of instinct, so he would probably rush forward and just try to bite him. Go ahead and make a bite attack. Okay. Uh, as the owlbear is running forward, he kind of sees his end and he's uh, yelling to the other two in the, in the web across, don't tell him anything, boys. It won't be worth it. Uh, 27. Oh. Damn. It's a hit. Oh, wait. Sorry. <sighs> I have two D20s. My bad. 27. And it was a natural 20. Damn. <laughs> yes. What the fuck just happened? The beak goes <laughs> chomp. <laughs> what the hell just okay. happened? That's... So I assume that hit. <laughs> yeah. And that was for the beak. I want to. I want to put this in the. <laughs> I want to just share this real quick so that it's actually in the the Zoom meeting. But yeah, there was a. Oh, and it's only six damage though. That was enough. That was all you needed. Cool. Then he just straight up, straight up, you know, the old beak down on his head, crunch. As he's mid-sentence, hopefully. Remember glass stock! <laughs> Squelch. So I'm going to look down to the one that I'm just sort of standing over. I'm like, so do you two have any smart ideas? <laughs> it's like, um, they're, they're like the um, Harry and Marv of the group. There's like a tall, skinny one, and then there's a short, fat one, and they kind of look at each other a little bit, and then look at you guys and just shake their heads. Uh -uh. Really? Because I kind of want to watch Thea throw you around as some sort of animal form. It was an ox. You saw the spider. There might be a gorilla involved. I just want to see this long one's arms ripped off. Are you sure you don't want to try anything smart? They're they're just uh, button-lipped. Okay. Kind of, kind of struggling against the web still a little bit, just because it's uncomfortable. But they're not like pulling, trying to break out of it. <clears throat> Go ahead and make an intimidation check, just, uh, just to make this a roll. Can I give him a bardic inspiration for that? Yeah, totally. Okay, I give the <laughs> bardic inspiration for his uh, intimidation. Like, I'm sure you have something really important to say to them, right? Nine plus a d6, so 12. <laughs> yeah, you beat them. So they, they are thoroughly intimidated by everything that is going on. They don't seem to uh, want to try and fight at this point, seeing the massacre that is this far going to go ahead and make my way to check on the owner and shopkeep. Totally. Uh, so yeah, once you get back there, um, you do
do know that the, or you do notice at first that the the, the owner has uh, untied his wife um, and it seems like they have made their way to the back room, um, sort of kitchen area where it seems their, their kids were hiding and they're all kind of just, uh, kind of just taking stock of each other and trying to just like be a family for a moment. Um, I imagine you would kind of, yeah. Um, um, as you as you look around, you find them all in there. You open the door, and they they don't really pay you much mind at first. They kind of just like wince a little bit harder, and then look over, and that the husband relaxes first, and that kind of makes the rest of the family. Relax so, a little bit. seeing the distress on their face, and seeing the kids, um, I kind of glance over and see a chef's hat, and I put it on, and I just look absolutely ridiculous. I go, well, it's safe. What's for dinner? And I'll grab a raw potato and just bite into it, which I absolutely hate, but I'll I'll do it in hopes of lightening their mood. <laughs> Make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> 19 on die. Uh, yeah, you, you absolutely hate it, but in means of saving face, you just kind of keep chewing through the, the dirt, dirt-ass taste in raw potato. <laughs> so I will start walking my way back to the, the main room. So I imagine you make your way through the the room that the family's in and then like up over the like table, you know, where they like serve the food back and forth. Yeah, and yeah. Climb up the over diner, that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Um, it's like as you're climbing through, Tolvin is uh, just thanking you again. Um, and reminding you that he'll he'll give you a free beer next time you you come through, as if you know you haven't had a few already. <laughs> Not to worry, Tombstone. <laughs> they bug me too. Um, can the rest of us hear the voices of the family back there? Yeah, it, there's pretty much nothing else going on uh, in the moment that the um, that this um, oh Jesus Christ uh, that this gnome kind of walks through the the tavern and then goes into the back. You, you guys can hear the, the muddled voices. Um, there isn't really too much conversation, mostly just your um, your new gnomish companion uh, mm-hmm. kind of hopping through, making introductions to more people. <clears throat> Things being, seem to have settled down and our two captives are silent. I'm gonna address the groups. Is everyone okay? Did anybody take any damage? Or is anybody injured? I'm tip top. I'm just gonna hold up the beer and keep drinking it. <laughs> Sorry if I creeped y'all out. <laughs> uh, you're like surprisingly soft. I'm gonna go <laughs> begrudgingly rip my axe out of the wall. I'm all right. Uh, so that it goes. I I believe I could take a bit of healing if, if anybody would so kind to of offer. Oh, you're <laughs> fine. I'm okay. Sit still. <laughs> Hold still, it's only hurt per second. Yeah, Nika needs healing too. Got hit. All right. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll note that. You just stay there. I'll be over in a second. Okay. And I'll do a healing word on. Uh, what's his name? Flutter. Flutter. Yeah, sorry. So he gets back four damage. Or or damage or healing damage? No, he gets back for for health. I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, and then Nikon. Do 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 do. Where does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 right la, here on my shoulder. Oh, he gets also four points of healing. Sweet. Hopefully that helped a little bit. Yeah, I got hit five. So pretty good. Okay. How's the family in the back looking? She addresses the gnome. Who? Uh, chef hat. I kind of snap out of the goofiness and I take the hat off. They're they're doing much better, I believe. Come on out, you're safe now. And I'll kind of hop and look over the server counter. Very good, very good. They'll they'll move their way to behind the bar to kind of see you guys, but still from a safe place, having the bar between you all. Um, and Tolvin just, uh, as he comes out, 
recognizes you guys, um, and Pip especially, uh, his eyes kind of light up, um, looking at you, Parthenax, recounting your dragon chess game. Um, and Tolvin goes, thank you, thank you all so much for saving my family. Can't imagine what it means to me. I, I believe they were trying to steal my alcohol for, for that tavern down the street. It appears they can't get any shipments. I can't imagine why. They were coming after mine. I, I can't thank you enough. I, I would love to give you all free drinks. I, I, at the moment, that's all that I can truly offer. I, I believe my family's in no condition to be serving anybody. I, I believe it's best that we retire as soon as possible. You are free, though, to use our kitchen and make yourselves food if you like and stay here for another night on, on the house. I don't believe we have enough rooms for all of you. We might have to double up or something, but please. Um, our, got... our hospitality is yours. Do you guys think we can stay here throughout the night? I mean, they just sent eight guys in. If these guys don't come back, are we going to be, you know, waking up to 16 more? Yeah, they already know where we're at. Yeah, it might, it might not be the best idea to stay in the same place. Yeah. I agree. Holman starts to look a little discouraged as you guys are kind of talking about this. Like, oh, I see. Holman, do you have any beverage and or food so good it might make a short rest feel like the longest of rests. <laughs> he looks He looks at you kind of curiously. I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about, uh, but I can give you free ale. Uh, perhaps it'll make your evening better. Uh, soothe your wounds. I, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Uh, if ale doesn't restore spell slots, I'm not interested. No, and neither does Song of Rest, unfortunately. Okay, so there's a well nearby with some undead troubling. Um, Tolbin does offer uh, the one of the next best places to stay would be in uh, either to make camp in the orchard or at Aldermath Farm. They might allow you guys to stay in the barn. Well, we know the gentleman from the orchard. We know we'd at least have our backs covered. We also know that they come out through a hole in that orchard. Oh, I can take you to that, don't worry. You knew that they were in a hole in the orchard. Came through. So what are we going to do about these two other guys on the ground? Mm, they're, against, they're on the wall still. Yeah, but I meant like, are we going to use them for anything? I figure we have our half a half orc companion use him like a pinata. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give him a few whacks for you. <laughs> as uh, <laughs> as everybody talks, Nikon is like checking the bodies and stuff, checking out that armor that's on him. Notice that they're all different colors, different shapes. Some are shiny. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Fifteen. Plus three, 18. Nice. Uh, yeah, you do know that um, this armor has been fitted to each individual quite well, um, that someone has uh, taken the time to make sure that they're outfitted individually with what's going to be most comfortable for them. Um, so it's very unlike what you would expect for some kind of ragtag militia. Um, usually they just have kind of whatever armor, armor cobbled together, um, very unfitting and or just standard or no armor, but um, there ha there seems to be quite a bit of organization behind um, whoever is sending them out um, and preparing them that they're making sure that they're set up correctly. <clears throat> that being said, it's kind of unlikely that um, this armor would fit you guys ideally, um, but it is still, some of it is still salvageable if you guys would need like a piece of plate mail or um, yeah, plate mail, or something to that degree. Hmm. What do we want to do with the two that are still alive, you guys? Well, Scylla, do you want to play good elf, bad dragonborn? Do you think we'll actually get something <laughs> out of these guys? I'll reply back to you in dragonborn. We should probably figure out what we want to ask them first so we can play it off well. But what's the questions? 
how many of there are you? What's the eyeball monster? What's that wizard yeah, deal? Cool. Why are you so rude? Why are you so rude? <laughs> Why are you so rude? <laughs> so rude. Oh, goodness. Uh, you can't expect common, common rabble to have manners, Parthenax. I'm not sure how you don't get that yet. Uh. Well, then I guess we'll start with the first one. I'll kneel down next to the prisoners, and, you know, very, very sweetly. We would really like to know how many of you are there, uh, since we're apparently going to have to defend ourselves against you quite regularly. If you'd like to volunteer that information, it would be in your best interest. And then I get up in the face, you're going to tell my lady friend what she needs to know. <laughs> Can I lean over their shoulders and be like, spider lady? <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so one of, one of you guys make an uh, intimidation check with advantage, or each of you make an intimidation check. I think it'd be funny if we each did it to see how each one goes over. Well, I don't think Cellos was Jessica quite... Freeze? Yeah, yeah Jessica but that, could not that, have that, frozen. It was great. Oh <laughs> my god. Yeah. I think like Cellos would have been you like... You froze at the most it. ideal place. Did I? Okay. That... Um, was I... <laughs> It was intense. So actually, the, I, I like that a little bit better um, because of how you guys are doing the good cop, bad cop. So sell it, go ahead, do uh, uh, persuasion, and then uh, Parthenax, do intimidation. Ah, uh -huh. okay, persuasion. 19. Yeah. Sorry, mouse glitching. And <laughs> even with my modifier. <laughs> Uh, he, he is thoroughly intimidated, for sure. Um, it doesn't seem, uh, it, does, it doesn't seem like There's he mommy. wants to tell you guys information whatsoever. There's, mommy. Uh, there's, there's about power. 20 of us. Is that all I, all I know? Yeah, I don't care. If mommy said yes, then yeah. Not a whole lot. I, I a good number of us came here. I, I'll just turn these real quick a second. I don't want Okay. About twenty. So About twenty is best you're getting. Twenty. Final. Final count. I'm going in my hoverboard. Okay, that's a lot. Um, oh, is that a kid? <laughs> I think I'm hearing a child in the background. Sorry, it threw me off a little bit. Um, that was not part of my soundboard, just so you know. There wasn't a child in the game. Okay, what did we get out of them? There's about there 20 of them. About 20 of them. Well, you've got them on the ropes, Parthenax. You want to keep asking questions? Uh, what's the wizard's deal? We know you got a wizard. That stuff. That's all I know. He, he carries a, a staff made of glass and he's a very powerful wizard. Wait, like what? What did he do? Magic. I slap him. Oh, thank you for I, I, I slap him. <laughs> <Did> <laughs> bitch. With, yeah, go, with the rings. <laughs> go, go ahead and Ouch. roll, roll in, uh, unarmed unarmed strike damage. The plus five. Is it, you so you just want the damage? Why'd you kill him? <laughs> right. Do subdue damage. So I do four damage. Okay. Um, yeah, he he takes it. He's not he's not stoked. Is he, he offended? Like, oh. <laughs> that's all I know. I swear. I've never met him. I've only heard stories about him. It's Wait, you've never met him? Who gives you orders if not this wizard who's supposedly the leader of your gang? <laughs> he's, he's quiet. <laughs> he's, he's quiet. <laughs> wishing he could rub his cheek. Okay. You know, I think that's probably going to bruise if you don't say something else pretty soon. 
I, I lean over again and I go, Spider Lady. I know his chambers <laughs> are on the western end of the stronghold. That's that's all I know. We're, we're told not to go there. Very well. You take orders from a wizard that you don't ever see. <sighs> then tell us about this eyeball monster. Apart from the fact that it is an eyeball monster. <laughs> you want to know, it's it's small, and it has spindly arms and, and sharp fangs. It's it's oh, horrifying. Oh, okay. No, thank you. You've given me a lot of information on that one. It's um, it's insane. It just hungers for flesh. It's it's slightly magical. I I, I don't know. We're, we're told to stay away from it, otherwise it'll eat you. And from what I've heard, it's it's quite vicious. What is the wizard's point in keeping it? Does he feed it? Is it like a pet? Apparently, the wizard struck a bargain with the monster, convincing it to guard the stronghold in exchange for treasure. Or <laughs> fresh meat, whichever the wizard could provide. <clears throat> Please tell me that fresh meat does not consist of villagers. He, he smirks. He smirks? Uh, do you want me to hit him again? Yes. Uh, spider lady? <laughs> <laughs> spider lady. Can I turn into a mastiff and bite his heel? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm going to turn into a mastiff and bite his heel. Roll, roll damage on a bite attack. I mean, you don't really have to aim. He's tied up. Or not more than tied up. He's covered in this gooey, spidery mess. Okay, so it's 1d6 plus 1. 4. He could die. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's really close. Ah, <laughs> die. You, you ankle-biting mutt! What are you trying to do? I told you all I know. <laughs> just, just writhing. Actually, you didn't give me an answer. Have you been feeding this eyeball monster villagers? Not personally. <laughs> Not personally. I see. Parthenax, kill him. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I think a punch should do it. I'm just gonna go sit next to Sella and like wag my tail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how how precisely do you want to do this? Because he has. Uh, only enough HP that uh, an unarmed strike would just take him out. I just want to unhinge his jaw. Like, I punch the jaw, and whatever's connecting it is just gone. It's just sort of leaf, uh, free floating in the skin. Damn it. All right. And that's oh. for being rude. <laughs> we still have one alive. <laughs> How intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> is he is he looking like he's wet himself yet or uh the other yeah the other guy uh it's like he wants to talk he's not sure like what information to give you first he's like what do you want to know it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter you you're, you're going to kill me anyway but just just don't oh, make no, it that horrible we have I mean, more. Frankly, we're not murderers we just really would like you people to cooperate it's not that difficult. Mm. So your friend here, may he rust whatever, uh, said you were feeding villagers to a magical eyeball monster. Are you doing this under duress or did you choose to? It's uh, not much of a choice to be honest with you. Uh, they just uh... Don't really know what to do with the commoners. I guess that's uh, the only thing that they can do with them. They're just trapped down there. All right. Hmm. Do the townsfolk know that you guys are feeding them to a monster? They certainly know you're taking hostages from previous conversations we've had. Do who know? Sorry, I missed that. Does mm -hmm. who know that 
oh, the villagers, the general populace, do they know that their loved ones in captivity are being fed to a little stinking demon thingy? I don't imagine they would. Hmm. How do you think they would react if we told them? You know, his, drug his, you out hmm? his eyes just get really fucking wide. That was the reaction I was hoping for. I see. Okay. Because I have a mind to have my owl bear friend here drag you to the village green and have you tell everyone what's been going on at the castle. I started growling at him. I like snarling. <laughs> Not an owl bear, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm like holding dog Sella back. Like, no, not yet. We need him alive. <laughs> what do you think you would accomplish by telling everyone they're already afraid? Already yes. don't want us here. I mean, but they, we could make them angry, which is be much more to probably everybody's benefit. An angry mob with pitchforks and torches storming a castle is a lot more effective than a ragtag team of, you know, adventurers. I'm going to say to Sela and Draconic, no, this guy's got a point. All we would do is further demoralize the villagers that are already suffering. Might put more people in harm's way as well. We're going to get a bunch of people mad, and then they're going to get themselves killed because they don't know how to fight against right. these people. So kind Not of yet. Okay, yeah. I guess that's fair. I mean, we can do that. Maybe just not now. Very well. What was the next question? Why are you so rude? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can ask him that one. <laughs> no, I do. I. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry. I don't know the meaning of the word. Oh my god. Rude. How I am. My the the snoot just sort of you killed all my like friends. a dice bag. How polite are you gonna be if I killed all your friends? <laughs> That's precisely what you did try to do to us. We were in here having a nice conversation. You bust in, axes and yelling, demanding things. I turn back into just human form. So I'm going to ask him, do you think you can beat us? Me? Not personally? No. Rude as well as Not stupid. me. I want him to leave all this stuff and go back and tell him the rest of his cronies what we did, how we slaughtered seven dudes with ease, without a scratch, pretty much. Essentially zero damage. And that, we don't occupy this tavern anymore. To so leave them alone. You say, that's, I th I, do I get to leave with my life? Well, yes, but not with your pants. <laughs> His eyes can't possibly get wider, but they, they do. <laughs> he hasn't blinked in a while. <laughs> Starts <That's> tearing. <laughs> I mean, that's how we'll let him go. Take our message back to your friends. Ask he will be them. pantless. Yes. Oh, actually, He's a little weird. <laughs> I do have one question for you before you go. <laughs> you have rather fine armor. It's all fitted and tailored. That's not really something you see in a ragtag band of idiots. So where'd you get this stuff? It just comes down from the black spider. He uh, supplies everything that the wizard need. needs. The black spider. He's spider the hired the wizard. Okay. Wizard mostly works with us. 
Have you ever met the spider? I know you've never met, well, the wizard. Met a spider today. (laughs) (laughs) That was the first time. I wink at him. (laughs) 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 I've never met the black spider. spider. Not even like a hard one, just like a little bitch slap. Just please. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the arm black spider. That's interesting. I don't have any more questions for him. Anybody else? No. All right. Well then, shall we let him go? <laughs> Strip him. Let's take a stuff. Yep. Yep. No, he has to take it off himself. Yep. Okay. Down to the skivvies. Mm-hmm. So, uh, one of you guys can attack the uh, web. To, uh, to I'll, I'll take my dagger and just kind of cut him loose. Go ahead and do an attack roll. It has an AC. Okay. Twenty-three. With with precision, you cut him out, um, almost like you cut him out so that he still stays like kind of bound up and can't like, really move around too much. Okay, okay. I'll cut him free enough so that he can take his clothes off. Dis- disarm him and then tell him to disrobe. And after a couple moments of uh, awkwardness, you have this uh, naked man standing before you, and he gets down to the underwear and. He kind of grabs it like curiously, like ah. Uh... No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I roll. I rolled two two eights. As uh, two the same die on on the thing. So like still still shivering and and naked, he like kind of tries to hop out, but then doesn't quite make it. And it's like his feet hit, and he just like tumbles over, and then he and he gets up. You people are assholes. <laughs> as he's running and away. And you speak villagers to a monster. <laughs> Who's should should one of us tail him? Oh, we already know where he's gonna go. I'm pretty sure the tavern or the mansion where they hide out. Oh, okay. We also know a secret entrance in an orchard that we're probably gonna go camp in. Yep. You two That's are more than for welcome me. to join. I just blew in from town into town, and I would be more than happy to accompany you. I was a soldier and. I'd be more than happy to fight beside you. We have a great payment and benefit structure. Wonderful. How's the <laughs> dental? And I'll smile. My teeth are kind of jacked up, and there's like a gear stuck in one. Uh, I'd be happy to have you. Oh, man. That dental thing is actually a really, really old joke. I don't know if you guys remember that one. That was awesome that you brought that up. <laughs> I wanted to offer the goblins dental. <laughs> Oh, goodness. That was forever ago. Mm-hmm. I don't think we offer dental, do we? No, but we do have a significant team savings plan, which can buy all of us things, provided that we all gather money towards the group. Yes, uh, Parthenac sleeps on it. Literally. I'm team treasurenator. <laughs> he, he's the team treasurer? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's he's he is who he is. He's not gonna let gold out of his sight, is he? No. Well, uh, I'm gonna look at the barkeep and ask him if he would like us to remove the bodies before we leave. Uh, I would greatly appreciate help in cleaning up. You you have no idea. That would uh, that would that would be quite gracious of you all. I don't think my family would be up for that tonight. That's totally understandable. And uh, McFluffy is going to begin to 
remove Drag them things. out. Yeah, just well, just one in each arm. He has a twenty of twenty strength plus five, so just we'll yeet them out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Same window that the other guy was yeeted out of. Yeah. Well, we don't want to break any others, and the front door doesn't need to be bloodied. <clears throat> so before long, your <laughs> owlbear does manage to pile up the remaining uh, bread brands, kind of clear them out of this tavern. Alrighty. And I guess, well, the easiest way to get rid of those is going to be to set them on fire. Gross. Yeah, I'll just give them a little dragon breath, just a little. Before we burn them, can I kind of rummage through and I would like to look for any insignia or any symbols on any of their armor or particular of course. anything that strikes my eye. Go ahead and do an investigation. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Six, so that will be a twenty-three. Uh, I'm actually gonna send you something in Messenger. Cool. Um, misspelled some words in there, but I don't really care. Anonymous is definitely the one that I did not get right. Uh, more importantly, was there any coinage found? Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. I'm keeping this one to like what you guys are specifically looking for on these guys. Mm-hmm. Fourteen. Uh, you you do find a couple of gold pieces uh, and a, a ton of copper. Um, four gold and twenty. Eight copper. Doesn't seem like they really had all that much. They're not. They're not rich bandits. This, town, this town's not, you know, hustling, bustling quite yet. It is up and coming. I'm gonna think for a second and realize they said that their armor came from the came from the black spider. So I want to see if there's an insignia of some sort on the armor itself that might give us at least a visual as to what this guy goes under. Uh, I won't make a royal investigation for this one. The, the armor does look plain. Um, it isn't it isn't branded by any specific um, maker. It is more the material that stands out than anything else. Nikon looks at the group. Can any of you guys check if this has magic on it in some way? I can. Okay. I have detect magic. Cool. We both can. Let's go ahead. Part the next. Yeah. I, I cast a peck magic. <laughs> <laughs> so there isn't any um, bes- besides the magical object that all of you guys uh, possess. Each of you kind of gives off a little bit of a glowing magical aura um, of a different flavor. Um, the only one that doesn't in the room is Salidar and Tolbin and his family. Um, the armor on the red brands doesn't give off a magical aura that <laughs> that it has a magical property. It's like you get the um, may contain peanuts kind of magical thing. Like it's come in contact and been made by somebody with amounts. magical. It's been on the trace. Same it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's not got that magical property, but it has definitely been. Uh, in contact with, or even once was magical. 
Like they didn't clean the cutting board in between. There's some cross contamination. Yes. Well, that sucks. Okay. Well, if it's not innately magical, it's no point using detect on it. Yeah. Or identify. It's kind um, of, yeah. But it is very specific handiwork, you said, and the fabric, the materials Material. are unique. Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. It's not made of like adamantine or mithril or anything to that degree. It is, it is just very rare, uncommon metals. Okay. Um, Slidar is our trader. I'm going to see if he can tell what any of it is or where it might come from. Um, I'll roll for him, but not really much reason he would know. Speaking of 19, I'm not quite sure. Um, these are very uncommon metals, especially for bandits to be using. Uh, whoever, whoever the employer is must, uh, must need them to accomplish a task and is quite willing to expend them uh, at great lengths, it appears, and outfit them with fine armor in some cases. And so, quite a larger mystery than I had anticipated. As I am squatted down and looking at the armor, and I'm running my finger across it, I snap my fingers twice, and a little like pickaxe comes out, and I'm kind of tapping it and tinkering with it. I've seen, I've seen armor like this before. I don't know why it would be here. I'm pretty sure I've seen, I've seen armor like this in uh, like dragons. It reminds me of stuff with dragons. Dragons. Not like, our, not like Parthenax, like actual dragons. Like actual dragon, like horde, dragon hordes almost. Huh. I only saw it in the war on very rare occasions. But yeah, I'm almost positive, and I bite it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty positive. I think that's the thing we've come across so far. Huh. What would anything to do with dragons want in a tiny town like this? Should we put some in your bag for later? I say yeah. we take a lot. I've got the space. Yeah. Wait. I bet they cost a lot too. Make some money off of it, maybe. Just in materials. It could be yeah. useful. Maybe. Yep. I mean, we also have our small tinkering friend here. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. I'm Hex Grim, but you can call me Hex. I'm sorry, I forgot it from earlier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would any of this be of use to you? Can you use it for your tinkering? Maybe. It is, it is plate mail. It is mostly plate mail armor. Um, although the uh, material is quite uncommon and you're unsure of it, it there are pieces of plate mail uh, and they're easily manipulated um, bits of armor that, yeah, you would probably be able to use in tinkering. In I'd way. be happy to take a look at it in some spare time. I'm sure I could do something with it. All right, then. Bella pushes up her, her sleeves and just starts disrobing all of these bandits <laughs> and them into her, her bag of holding. So yeah, there are um, four, would that be half plates? And then there are four full plate. So it's kind of like the difference between like a pauldron sort of setup and then like a chest piece, that shell. Mm -hmm. It's like four of them have these shells that are kind of like fitted to, to their body and then one of them have like the shoulder piece. Kind of pieces. All right. So we've got that taken care of. <sighs> Who's ready for a bonfire? <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> not a lot of the old one. <laughs> the slow hand raise from Thea. That's awesome. Ha have okay. at it. Yes. So you guys take uh, take the bodies about. You know, not necessarily out back, but um, as there as it is quite dense on the, the back half of this. Um, you guys take the bodies out uh, and pile them up. Oh yeah, I forgot the the two from over here. Um, and you you dispose of the evidence, as it were. Um, we'll probably wrap it up there for the evening. Um, 
I'm going to stop the recording here for in a second. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you next time. It was nice meeting you guys.